Hey Ratbags, it seems some of you guys really liked my augmentations tutorial and how to get guns and some of you are still a bit puzzled about how to actually progress in Nightingale. I have to admit it doesn't help itself because at some point it gets a bit confusing very early on in fact about where or what you're meant to do next. So this is basically a tips video, a slight walkthrough of my progress towards the watch which at the moment is the end game. I'm not going to show every single step in detail, that will come in separate videos, things like how to prepare for certain boss fights. But I am going to explain the order and the realms and what you should be doing in terms of what realms opening up, where you should go after you've completed some of the sites of power and what kind of gear and stuff that you might be expected to have. Find it useful, do leave a like, let me know how much you enjoy Nightingale and let's go. So first things first, you'll be guided through the tutorials by Puck. I shouldn't really have to explain this. This is pretty basic and the game does a pretty good job of this point at least, guiding you first three realms that are basic tutorial stages. Don't hang around, just do exactly what it says on the right hand top screen and you'll make your way through eventually to the Abeyance realm. So something I got wrong in one of my tips guides was I was under the impression from the devs themselves that you'd be able to build a respite on any realm, but no. At the moment currently you can only build a respite home on Abeyance. So if you try building an Antiquarium, a Gloom, a Herbarium, whatever it is, you would always respawn on the first Abeyance realm that you was previously at. It doesn't mean you can't build bases on any other realm, but in terms of respawning you will not be able to. It's for the progression purposes, but like I said, during one of my tips videos, I said you could, because simply put, I was told that's the case when we had lots of Q and A's. So it looks like that might be added in the future. So the abeyance really is where you're gonna be setting up shops. So choose carefully what kind of realm you want as your starter. The desert is tough because of the stamina drain that you get when you get too hot. As long as you've picked up some of the umbrellas in the first stage of the swamp tutorial on the towers, you should be able to negate this until you craft your own. It offers much flatter spaces and open spaces if you're a real builder and you want to build every set that's in the game and be able to have a nice a big massive town. You also come across a lot more certain ores and they can be easier to spot because they're normally always around a rock formation. You won't have as many trees but there are plenty of tree groves that you'll be able to find so yeah, my top tip is the desert's not as bad as you might think. The swamp on the other hand, I can't really see too many benefits of being in. I don't think you get the Bayance disease when you're in the swamp, it's only in the late levels, but still getting that water debuff every time you're taking a step in slightly deeper water is not the one. And although there are quite a lot of resources like iron, especially found in the swamp, I would totally go for the desert and obviously the forest, which most of you have probably chosen. So, you're in your Bains realm, you're following the guide, you've gone over to the site of power and you've cleared it out after getting yourself a follower and obviously making sure that you've got a little base set up. Remember to get the follower, you just got to replenish all of these blueprints and then you'll be able to get one once the chest opens. So you need a gear score of 20 to access this site of power and again that should be pretty easy to follow as part of this extended tutorial. A lot of the times to get to the next level you only need to upgrade maybe four pieces of armor and always make sure you upgrade a weapon at first possible chance or make a new one as that's always going to give you a really high level too. Gear score of course is what you're holding in your hand so if it ever changes don't forget that I've seen some people confused while they could access stuff sometimes and others not. You make your way all the way down and you take on the fabled Ormaton Knight. Hopefully this is where most of you have got to without needing any help, but after this is where it gets a bit confusing. There are six more places like this that you have to conquer on this Abeyance Realm. It doesn't matter if you decide to reset the Abeyance Realm, travel to another Abeyance Realm, every single Abeyance Realm is going to have these six sites of power and they increase by 10 levels pretty much every time. So Antiquarian is level 20, after this you'll be taking on the Astrolabe at level 30, then the Provisioner at level 40, Herbarium at level 50, Gloom at level 60 and Hunt at level 70. Immediately after doing that and taking on that boss and getting all the loot, you'll be asked to go to a Antiquarium realm. This is where it starts confusing people that they might have to spend all their time on the antiquarium running around trying to find the next portal or the next site of power. Also FYI, if you've chosen different difficulties, either easy, medium, hard or extreme, that can affect the different level types that you'll see when you're joining a world, but it's the same principle, it usually goes up by 10 or 20 each realm difficulty. 
You talk to Aurelio, he asks you to pretty much go and do some work using an enchant spell or infusion. This can all be done back on your abeyance, you don't have to start setting up a new base on the Antiquarium. Now again the tutorials guide you through the process of making your cards and getting the essence upgrades as well as putting obviously the fusion on your weapons. Do check your journal at all times and your quest log if you are a bit stuck even at this stage. I kid you not, I've seen people in my comments on streams and videos saying they don't know where to go next because they've been looking around the antiquarian site looking for all these different sites of powers. So yeah, it is a bit Captain Obvious, but some people may have just missed that little dialogue box telling them. So next up was part of progression and you can do this anywhere you find a Bay Tower is try and get hold of the Synchronous Lotus. And this is where you're probably guided towards the antiquarian realm to go and do this. There's always enemies at the bottom and enemies that will spawn at the top and in the middle it can be procedurally generated what you'll encounter. Either a maze, a parkour challenge or one of the puzzles where you have to shoot the different little plimps. So lotuses can be found in these chests and there you go. These are going to help you make your portals, your respawn fairy rings or a realmic transmuter so you can play minor cards wherever you want. So back to Aurelio once you've done this and then this is where it gets a bit more confusing. He says go and find Nelly Bly. Nelly Bly is found on the Herbarian Desert, but that is at least two levels above you in terms of the realms and the realm cards or the sites of power that you need to unlock. Back on the Abeyance Realm, you may have come across some of these sites of power and they would have had the little force field blocking you from getting in. And you may be thinking, right, I need to obviously do this next, but how do I do it? What gear level do I need? They changed this for launch, it used to show up every single one on the map and it would give you a pretty description of exactly yeah, which one it was, glass. but they stopped that so not to confuse people, so you'd only focus on the next site of power rather than trying to gain access to a higher level one. But that became even more confusing because the first thing it says to you in the guide after completing some of that is to go and find and talk to Nelly Bly at the Desert Herbarium. So lots of players are stumped because they can't see that herbarium site of power because it's not on the map. First you have to clear the astrolabe and then the provisioner sites of power. Astrolabe, like I said earlier, will be gear score of level 30 and then the provisioner will be gear score of level 40. You effectively have to make sure you go and craft your own simple gear rather than wearing what you're wearing or maybe you swapped with your follower. And you have to upgrade it to the uncommon level more than likely to get access to some of the levels. So the upgrade bench is obviously vital for doing that. That's one thing you need to buy from Essence Trader, but I do believe get it given to you by Aurelio. And generally at this point, you should have all of the crafting benches, the simple ones at least. Remember, we do that by scouting or changing up either the Antiquarian or jumping into the Astrolabe, either desert, swamps, or of course, the forest. So it's pretty simple when you think about it. Whatever the realm is in terms of level, that's your gear score needs to be matching or higher. Each one will have some slight differences on the Abeyance realm. Some will be bound enemies inside. In fact, more than likely most of them will. So it will get progressively harder with more varieties of the bound appearing as well, like this flamethrower do in the Provisioner one. You will not be able to go to these realms like the Provisioner until you've cleared out this site of power and that's how you get given the recipe to go ahead and make the card. So indeed, once you get to the Herbarium one that you need to clear out, this will give you access to the next part of the story. This doesn't mean you're going to be at the watch, which is kind of the end game just yet. Also a little shout out to the Iberian boss, it's the one boss that is actually higher, you'll have to do a bit of climbing stairways, taking on automatons, and make sure you bring your umbrella, because he does have a habit of yeeting you off the sides. The thing here is you can also skip going to the Iberian desert, and you don't actually have to talk to Neddy Bly yet, you can carry on doing the different realms and sites of power. I didn't actually go and talk to her until I'd completed all the other ones, Gloom, as well as Hunt levels. That's because I know already from playing the preview that she's going to task you with a bunch of things and some of the stuff she wants you to do, you won't be able to do until you get to the hunt levels. Anyway, let's not jump ahead too much. The basic premise is, of course, as I said, you've got to get uncommon upgrades. So all green on your clothing and you've crafted at least all the simple gear and probably looking towards crafting the trapper gear. The trapper gear automatically unlocks once you've placed down a refined crafting or workbench. 
If you've been watching a lot of Twitch drops, you may have received that purple outfit. It is significantly better than a lot of the starting gear and worth upgrading all the way up to level blue, i.e. rare. But I was trying to show a everlasting guide that some people may find useful as obviously the Twitch drops won't last forever. Something else might be confusing, but remember you can always check in the trader section in the menus is where to find refined crafting stations. They usually all unlock once you start exploring the provisional realms. You do have to get used to checking that essence trader a lot to map out what kind of gear you want. There's only really four armor sets that you can unlock before you get to the watch, unique or complete ones at least. Anyway, you do get like an extra couple of hats and maybe a few other small items separate on their own. So the progression rise, it should be simple, and then you go straight to Trapper, and after that it's a choice between NTTC or going for the Jaunty Bundle. All these sets can be bought from the various different regions as you keep going up all the way through to Hunt. Throw this in here as well, you do find certain resources at higher tier in lower levels. So you will come across tier 2 fiber, tier 2 trees, but you just need better tools. The further you go up, the more abundance you'll find them resources in the natural biomes without having to be a different color or a different type of wood. So it does make sense to go to these later realms oh, gotcha. instead of trying to go back to old ones and finding these smaller spots as it's more in abundance in the later ones. So as soon as you do unlock the provisioner set of realms, you really should go and get yourself refined tools and a refined set of workbenches. It may take a bit of time, but that is the idea. If you can't find them all in provisioner, you may have to go to the next level, which obviously would be herbarium. And goes without saying, by now you should be starting to collect more tier 2 resources. You'll find some of the fibres around the more colourful trees that look different from the rest of the trees. That's where you find the fibre. And so obviously you may need better tools to harvest some of this stuff. And generally, obviously with the augments, you need to start making sure you've got some so that your crafting stations refine and cook stuff quicker, but also unlock some of the recipes if you can't see them in your crafting bench. Like I said, I've done a full length guide on augmentations and crafting, so go and check it out if it's still a bit confusing, but definitely pay attention. If you've definitely got the recipe because you bought it from a trader or you unlocked it by completing an encounter, then you should be able to craft it as long as you've got the right augment. Top tip, don't automatically dismantle your simple workbenches or crafting stations because they can still be useful. Things like the simple smelter are really good for just making tons of ingots saving your brazier for the more complicated component parts. It looks like they do increase the time slightly now, whereas in the preview, having a different upgrade bench didn't do that. And some augments do increase speed up the cooking or refinement process. So check to see if that's happening by looking on the station traits when you're in the crafting menu. So again, I'll repeat, Antiquarian, Astrolabe, Provisioner, Tier 1, you'll predominantly find mostly Tier 1 resources and this is where you're going to get your Tier 1 essence. You can come across little groves of trees or certain ores that will be much higher but you will need better tools to go and harvest them and collect them. Tier 2 is the Herbarium, the Gloom and the Hunt. These get increasingly more difficult, especially the Gloom which has a lot more enemies and the Hunt which has a lot more wildlife. Last thing to kind of mention is you find all the refined workbenches on Provisional Realms. But if you want to upgrade your gear to rare rarity, the blue ones, you are going to have to go to Gloom. I do believe it's the Gloom Forest, as that's where you can find the refined upgrade bench. You can double check this in your obviously trader section as well, just to be 100% sure. But it's the one quirk that some people might not realize since it seems obvious that you would get that alongside all the other crafting benches in the provisional realm is to gate it a little bit more because they don't want you having epic gear before too early and it really is up to you you can go and speak to nelly Bly, and she will then give you three different quests to talk to or take on three bosses and these can be done passively or you can go ahead and just keep going through the herbarium go through all of the gloom and then all of the hunt realms before eventually coming back and finishing off the job with Nelly Bly to gain access to the watch. Nelly Bly wants certain resources that you have to gather from the bosses that you'll find in the realms to go ahead and open a portal back to the watch. Spoilers are coming now because we're going to be talking about them bosses or apex creatures that do roam around the realms so you have got a chance just coming across them naturally. 
But yes, you're going to have to fight a Sun Giant. You'll have to fight a Eton, an Elder One to be precise, and a Bishop Automaton. If you kill all three of them, you've then basically got the resources or materials needed to go ahead and enter the watch. But there is another way that you can gain these resources by partaking in side missions or the passive route. And this is where you might have come across a couple different NPCs that give you these missions. And this is basically the reward they give you is help in achieving this objective. The first NPC that you most likely come across is Victor Frankenstein, which can be found in any desert astrolabe. It's pretty easy to spot, it's in a huge tower and he'll give you the missions where effectively you're going to have to give him some resources that you've gained from killing lots of bound. In fact he wants a different type of resource from each type of the bound and quite a lot of them as well, either three or five pieces. Now this is the one actual mission that I did go and just kill the boss because it's fairly easy instead of doing it this passive route. You then have to craft him a special item utilising certain resources from some of the automatons, that's who he's studying. So these can add a good amount of time to the game if you really want to get the most out of visiting every NPC and partaking in every part of the story. And then you can still go ahead and choose to either do the passive route when it comes to the boss or doing it a bit more violently. So you can get a spell which allows you to find apex creatures and alphas and it basically leads you to the way. I got really lucky and came across this bishop not long after speaking to Nelly. They're different from the knights because the bishops will have these little shields and they'll set their little minions on you, whereas the knight will directly usually attack you. Honestly, the amount of effort it takes to get the passive route with this, you would just simply walk up to one of these and it will give you a little box that you could put your item in that you'd eventually get from Victor. It's just not worth it. You can find plenty of these roaming around the deserts so of the herbarium and you've got more chance of them spawning if the realm is more difficult too. So with the oil collected from defeating it, as you can see it's on the floor here, that is part one. Next up it's time to go to the Antiquarian Swamp, so actually this is probably the one that you might come across before the Astrolabe, and you will find a NPC here too. These NPCs or missions will always be clearly marked out on the map by either a little quotation mark, and if you hover over it it should say Quest. This is Ludvin St. Clair and she wants you to help cure some of the blight and diseases that her and her survivors have inflicted. She'll actually help you take care of the Elder Eton boss passively. You have to give her three curative potions and then the second stage is go fishing. You'll have to deliver her some cut gems, usually amber, lots of cloth and you have to catch 16 of these fen bass fish that you can find in swamps because you need two fish to make one oil and so she requires eight of the fish oil. I can't stand fishing in any game because I don't like it in real life, but I've got to say this is probably one of the easiest fishing mini games I've played. But the drop rates for this particular fish aren't great, you end up catching a lot more of other types. So if you've got the angler cards, do play it or any kind of charms that give increased chances of getting better fish, or at least more essence while you do it. You then have to go ahead and craft some special type of meat. Two ritual meat in fact, give one to her and you save the other one to give as an offering to the elder tree. It can be worth doing these side missions, it does reward you with a lot of gear, especially you can see here I'm getting the refined alchemical boiler and other stuff. So you will miss out on some of these rewards if you don't bother with these NPCs, it's entirely optional, you can just go ahead and kill these bosses if you know where to find them. Now your spyglass can be used here for usefulness you would think because you can always see the names of enemies when looking through it but the Elder Otton won't always show up necessarily until you get super close and it won't show up on the spyglass. Instead you might have to use a tracker like this I just really hope you get super close. The Elder Otton is quite a chunky tree and you will have to deliver this particular piece of meat inside this box that will open up and instead you will now get the hearts of the Otten to go ahead and use. It does look like you get more of the actual hearts by killing the creature, so I presume it's the same for the other creatures. So if you're doing this as a group, they'll all have to either take part in it, or at the very least, they have to craft some of the certain items to give to the NPCs if they're following that route. Otherwise, as long as they've got the actual end game items you need to give to Nelly Bly, they can skip all of this as well. So if you do get extras, share the love. So the third and final NPC that you'll have to meet for progression is Danu. She lives in the Gloom Swamp. 
Her tasks require you to take care of at least five intellect puzzles that you find on the map, but make sure you speak to her first before doing them. It's relatively easy to do. I do believe you can do these on any map as well. It doesn't have to be this particular swamp. You then have to craft something called a curio configuration. The curio configuration, I do believe you go back to Danu once you're able to craft it, or she'll give you the recipe for it, which you may need to put this cauldron down, otherwise it's any magic augmentation. And then you've got your item to go ahead and give to the Sun Giant. Just like the Eldiotton, it should pull up a special box. This is where you can go ahead and put the item in. And in return, you get the special etched ingots that will then be taken to Nelly Bly. As I said, as a bonus, you can go ahead and kill this guy still, as it will still drop more of the same resources. So if you're with your pals, it might be definitely better to go ahead and give him it if you've managed to do that mission, or just take it by force. I am very much going to have more detailed guides on all of these, but they'll be coming separately. So that's it, you've acquired all three pieces, whether by directly finding them, using the spells or going to the correct realms. This guy will only actually spawn, I do believe, on hunt desert realms. So what kind of gear are you expected to have to take on these bosses? Well, the bishop is actually surprisingly pretty easy, so I don't think you necessarily need all blue, but certainly one of your weapons to be rare. As long as you keep distance, it's fairly easy. The Sun God and the Elder Aton, if you're going to be fighting them, you probably do want nearly all of your gear to be blue. So that's a lot of time spent in the Herbarium, the Gloom and the Hunt Realms, getting lots of Tier 2 Essence. Every upgrade that you do on your armour, whether it's upgrading it to Uncommon or to Rare, is going to cost 40 of that Essence. So I think you need like 240, 260 Essence to get a fully upgraded armour set and one weapon. The bosses have various different weaknesses, but again, that's going to be covered in separate videos. At this stage, though, you would be looking to be making your best gear that you've got out of, obviously, the best resources. So back to Nelly Bly, and you've done it. You've made your way to the watch. Once at the watch, you will get granted a special card. That means you can go back to it anytime you want just by clicking on the map. And instead of clicking return to Spite, it'll have the option to go to the watch. That way you can't cheese and give access to any of your friends just by crafting a card. The watch is home for the vaults. They are, like I said earlier, longer versions of some of them pastilles all tied together with a big boss. And the bosses, you guessed it, are pretty much the ones that you've already come across. Well, it will be the Elder Oton, the Sun God. You may have come across another big bad boss, which is huge, and that is Humbaba. But that is pretty much a last boss to kill, rather than something that's going to help you progress. You don't really have anything to give it. There's no passive route. As far as I know, nothing that you get from it is about progression. And this is where the game truly opens up. This is where you start getting access to tons more different types of weapons and obviously lots of armors. I know they're clothing, but I'm going to carry on calling them armor. You're still somewhat limited by different types of guns, but you certainly have a plethora of different axes and weapon choices. Talk to all the NPCs, follow it through, and this is where you access them vaults, or you can make a card and just craft it yourself so you can do it completely solo. You don't have to do it in public lobbies. Vaults can be done with your friends by going through the same portal at the same time, or crafting the card and then inviting them along. They offer the biggest concentration that you'll probably get of tier 3 essence in one go, and you'll have to run these many times over as a lot of the items in the watch are much more expensive than you've seen any of the other items in terms of tiers and essence costing. Like it's literally something like 1,500 for most weapons, maybe even more than that for some of the different guns. That tier 3 essence you'll be grinding from the Ascendant Realms. The realms you visited are now going to be labelled Ascendant and you'll have to actually craft a bunch of cards to get access to them. But they do go more in order now. So you'll start with an Ascended Antiquarian that you have to visit. And then you'll gain the card from the trader or from going through that area. It then unlocks the card for the Ascendant Astrolabe. So on and so forth until you sneak all the way back around to Ascendant Hunt. And there we go. That is pretty much how you progress in Nightingale in terms of story and where you should be going and what realms visiting and whether or not it's worth it for you taking on bosses or doing it a bit more passively. You may come across other NPCs as well. They may give you rewards like Bass. He can be found in, I do believe, the Provisioner Forest. 
And if you follow his quest line in basically being good with a sling bow and some ammo, you'll get the reward of a pistol recipe. Otherwise, you can just buy these recipes from each one of the provisional realms. So a few key things to note there. If you want a pistol, it is indeed on the provisional forest. You can either get one by completing the quest for him or by buying it from the essence trader. If you want the shotgun, you'll have to go over to the provisional desert. And if you want the rifle, it's the provisional swamp. These three guns are the only guns you'll have access to until you'll make yourself to the watch where you can buy more recipes and unlock them from the different realms. After the watch, I do believe that's also where you'll find the Pagoda and the Bhutan, different build tiers. I'm sure you get the Stave, the Desert, the Shack and the Crude set all inside the first part of the realms before the watch. It's again can all be checked by checking out the Essence Traders in the menus to see what they sell. You also have to buy all the excellent workbenches here and this is how you make the best gear and get access to the full set of different materials needed to craft the best items. You will be given lots of items as well as freebies so do try and complete at least one vault before you maybe leave this realm. I think it's randomly generated but you basically be given one rare item and maybe one epic or maybe maybe less than that it depends on the level you are or maybe even higher if you really grinded the game out and quite high level you might end up getting two epic pieces of clothing and I do believe like I said it is random although you are given a choice to choose between ornate and I do believe more more kind of hard working tool sets so bear that in mind if you've been using a lot of magic and enchantments on your tools pick the ornate set if you're more about efficiency and just getting the best out of something, choose the other. And that's it. That's how you complete Nightingale. That is the progression path. I do hope this video has been useful. Sorry if I've over explained or maybe not explained enough. Like I said, I'm doing individual guides for a lot of these different aspects. But so many people were complaining about not really knowing where to go, or what to do. Hopefully this has helped. If it has, leave a like, make sure you're subscribed. And I'll see you ratbags for more Nightingale content soon.